All right, and we're back with some more. <coughs> yeah, some. <laughs> my favorite. So this is a little bit of a weird puzzle. Once again, these are all very much American products because, like all fine American products, you have to shoot them with a handgun or something large to make them stop. Um, I don't think this is an atrocious puzzle. I mean, it's interesting. I can say that much. Now, I will say I'm not really as worried about my ammo in this chapter as much as the first part of the game. And you can also hear a Hecu soldier in here <clears throat> from Vanilla Half-Life, which is really weird. So, this is another scripted event. We have to make sure we do this correctly, otherwise it won't actually work. And I don't think you really need to open this vent up. There's just some head crabs in there. There's like three of those fuckers. So, maybe you do. I don't know. I've done it every time, and it doesn't really... <clears throat> Yeah, you can hear that heck you soldier in the background. I guess we do have to open this up. Like I said, there's a lot more scripting you have to do in this. And I think that's supposed to be like air sucking out. I I don't know. I couldn't honestly tell you what the hell is going on with it. So, this is a little bit fucky, but it can be done. So, just go ahead and shoot this zombie. I mean, he does die. And just crouch jump your way over this shit. And there's another one in the back. So yeah, you don't need to use that vent or anything. You can just do this. Now if you go through here, you can see there's actually an aggressive Hecu soldier who drops a grenade and he does shoot at you if you get too close to him. So be careful for that when you go through here if you're trying to do some cool world record speedrun strat. I think the only reason he did that was because he had to have the like grenade explosion trigger to make the thing stop or something. I don't know, because he's always done that. He crouches down and he shoots uh, the grenade. Yeah, you shoot grenade, don't you know? So, we are going to go back here again. There's also another little scripted cute cutscene here. Yeah, nice hat. Um, so we're going to go through this way. I don't really like this part because I feel it's 100% just filler. I mean, I'm not perfect either as a map designer, but I feel like this is 100% just filler. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So we have to go all the way back up here where that truck went from. And man, that... Where did they come from? I, I mean, I don't know. Why are these dogs here but the truck was? I don't know. How did the zombie get there? I don't... I don't know. You're, you're better asking someone else that's not me. So we have to go ahead and flick this thing off. And we also get the... I don't really know what this is supposed to be. I'm guessing it's like a... A scorpion machine gun or an mp5 i don't know it's really not that great um <coughs> i know you have to use it more in the uh third episode so you can use it you don't really get very much ammo for it and there's a little scripted event we can watch there where some airstrikes go down but i really can't be bothered um this is like why i say a lot of this just feels like you're trimming fat you're going back and forth there's not very much shit going on and I will say this, you can run through this mod without having to worry too much about your ammo, because it is pretty, li like, liberal with ammo in this one. It's not nearly as unforgiving as the first uh, expansion. Well, I keep calling it an expansion, but it's a mod. It feels very much like a mod, but also like a real Half-Life expansion. So, this is a another pretty kind of cool puzzle. I actually like this. So don't touch that water, it's fucking death. You will die in like one second and you will have no idea what the hell killed you. It sucks. Just stay the fuck away from it. There's also some like oil or something on the ground here. If you uh, walk on it, you're gonna not have a good time. Also a nice clever reuse of uh, Half-Life 1 um, animations and stuff. That's the animation that the um, like introduction bits of the uh, invasion have in it. You know what I mean. <clears throat> so this is timed. We have to kind of book or tee our ass down there. And we need to get in this spot where this uh, turbine is. Hello, Mr. Ichthyosaur. Please don't mess with me. So, oh dear. I really don't want to get fucked up by this thing because they do a lot of damage. So let's just kind of ignore him for now. And this is timed because you have your oxygen, obviously, you got to worry about. But there is a lot of resupply in here. You don't have to worry too much about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. That whole, like, puzzle is pretty cute. I like it. There's not very much stuff in this that I don't like. I just feel like this entire section could just probably have been cut out and it would have been fine. So you can ignore that other air pocket. There's nothing in there except just 
air. <laughs> I hate to burst your bubble, man. It's not that exciting. So there's also a med kit in here if you need it. Like I said, this mod uh, does have higher healing on med kits. So you don't have to worry about, like, it's only 25, I think, in vanilla Half-Life. So it's a lot more spaced out rather than med kits everywhere like they are in Half-Life 1. But, you know, they, you do get, like, quite a bit of health in this mod. Opposed to the first part, I should say. So there's the white Barney. Um, they do shoot faster. They have the exact same, like, damage, I'm pretty sure. And you can get a couple of supplies off of this. Now... If you remember me saying I think there's a lot of stuff that could be cut out, this entire section right here is also just completely unavoidable. Or avoidable, I should say. And so, yeah, he... He rises... Very awkwardly, I might add. So over there is just the other side of that airstrike that you could have watched in that little cutscene. So you don't have to go over there. There's no supplies. It's actually just a colossal waste of time. But I I love the out... Look at that. You guys thought I was kidding when I said the ichthyosaurs are fucked up in this mod. They are very fucked up. So here's another area with another red herring, so you don't have to explore very much. I do like this aesthetic, though. It's really cool. But I wish that this was more of what the mod was like rather than just sewers and... Yeah, you know. Also, the sound design is still top-notch. This is a fantastic, well-made uh, approach. So, little cutscene. I don't even know what to compare how he sounds to. <clears throat> it's incredible. So, this doesn't do anything. This is literally just kind of poorly telegraphed, if you ask me. You just have to wait for this Barney. And, um... He does take quite a bit of time to get in here. <clears throat> so... He also doesn't have an immediate, like, reaction to you. So it's really easy to not know that you're supposed to just wait. But... You know, I can forgive it. It's not terrible. I like how there's a police car in here, too. I, I would have, like, thought that there would have been something else, but I guess this makes sense, too. I haven't really been in very many parking garage complexes or anything. They're just not my cup of tea. I don't go in them. So, remember when I said this is very much like Resident Evil? Um, it's very cool. I love this shit. Um, I think out of all the cool shit in this mod, I wish it just started here. I, I really do. I... Also, going that way is pointless. There's nothing over there you really need. I don't think you can break this, and I don't want to find out. Um, actually, let's see if you can break this. Let's quick save. Okay, you can't break it despite it being made out of wood. So, it is a little bit odd because it's the only fucking thing in the area, but at the same time, I wish there was a little bit more of a puzzle to get in. Also, why would there be a vulture out at, like, midnight, I'm guessing? So... Go ahead and ring the doorbell. It's hard to hear on your guys' end, probably, but there is footsteps coming in there. And we'll, we'll see who those belong to in a minute. Oh no, it's Alfred, and he ran away. I love this. This is just a reuse of the, uh, the doctor model, the cop model. And that's literally just the Team Fortress classic civilian. It's really cute. I love this. This is so fucking cool. Um, the first time I went through here, I, I actually just was on edge. I was like, this is really creepy. I like it. So there's a lot of little doors we gotta go through, and I don't know. I, I like this. This is actually the highlight of this little chapter as well, I think. There's something just really eerie and cool about this. So we do need to find Alfred. He's the assistant in this area. We can actually find his door, I'm pretty sure, as well. So... Yeah, top-notch. I really love the design on this. You can tell what everything is supposed to be. Uh, there's a nice creepy-ass bathroom with a working toilet as well. And you can break that mirror. You can also turn this on. I think that causes, yeah, steam damage of all things. Shit, man, that is not fun. So, yeah, we can do that if you want to. You can also go down here. 
We don't need to go down here right away, but I strongly recommend breaking that. <clears throat> I don't know if you need to break that to continue, but do it anyways. You can listen to some lore if you really are that interested in this game, but there's quite a lot of stuff in this that has uh, cool shit like that. That fucking radiator. So, anyways, you can break this, get some rifle ammo, and we need to go in the closet and... I did not think that was going to kill me. Wow. So... Is it just not going to blow up until I go near it? I'll just use this. Pfft, how lame. Oh my god. I hate snarks so damn much. They're the most irritating thing ever. But yeah, the first time I played this, that actually made me jump. Which I really don't have happen very often. Because the atmosphere in this is so damn thick, you can cut it with a knife. I love it. It's so well made. <clears throat> That's how you make a well made jump scare, in my opinion. You have to actually anticipate it. And I think that the uh, lack of enemies in this area is pretty cool. So we gotta go down to Dr. Franklin's office after hitting that switch. We got some weird eugenics bullshit on the wall. And I love this. This is just a fucking, fucking cheap photoshop of it. It's so cute. It's not bad. I'm saying it's cute. It's genuinely quite funny. Oh, hey. You do have to activate him, though. Now, I'd like to point out, that is not what a Half-Life actually is, but I get what they were going for here. Half-Life is the decay of uh, subatomic particles of radiation uh, based on a certain number of years. That's not what it is. Hmm. I don't know why he has to go over here to tie his shoe. I think you could do that any other place except right there, but that is foreshadowing. You need to go here later. Okay, so now we get to go into the underground section. Here's a white Barney. Like I said, they're not really much more different than the uh, blue one. The only difference is they shoot faster. And this is pretty good telling that that's really fucking dangerous. You gotta use your American brain to stop it. I understand why people would think this is hard if they're not from America. We do this all the time. Um, so yeah, now we can go down here. And be ready for the uh, bullshit. I like how I say I never use this, but I'm using it anyways. I don't like the double shot. It's really iffy. So now we can open up that. <coughs> what that's going to do is not going to be until like way later. That's almost like the end of the mod. Shit, I missed. See, that's why I don't like the double shot. If you miss, it's so damn unforgiving. Ooh. So you can use the elevator to bring this up. Now, it's going to stop over there, but I'm going to go down here. And then just be really careful and just go in here. I'm just getting really ballsy, man. I don't know. And that's the Half-Life teleport noise. I don't know why that has to be for that specifically, but it is, so. And we can go over there. This does where, or sorry, this is where the mod starts to get a little bit weird. I don't just mean like thematically weird. I mean like the logic starts to become a lot more, you need to know what you're doing sort of stuff to do it. Like if you've never played Half-Life and you don't know how to crouch jump, you're gonna be in for a really, really bad time. So, this is not electrified, we can just walk across. There's a Barney over here. Yeah, take that, white supremacist Barney. You're the worst, you fucking piece of shit. Oh man, I am sorry, that was terrible. But anyways, this is very Resident Evil-y, as you can tell. There's the laboratory. I don't know, I just call it lab, or laboratory, because I'm a normal person. 
I don't know. My cat just walked in here as well. He's probably going to have something to say about all this, if I had to guess. Framps, how do you say it? He just doesn't care. He's going to wander around. He went outside today. He thinks he's very brave. He's, he's trying so hard. He growled at me because I didn't let him take something. So, remember this spot as well. This is foreshadowing for later. We do have to do a lot of weird shit here. So, this is where I say you need to know how to actually maneuver in Half-Life. No. I like to point out you need vocal cords to do that, but whatever. Also, this is a very clever use of, uh, <laughs> like, animations and stuff. That guy doesn't die, but he will later, so... Go ahead and open the gate up. And make sure you open that up. There's nothing in that freezer except someone trying to reenact that one scene from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. By the way, that's my favorite horror film ever made. So, we need to get up there. This is why I say you need to know how to maneuver in Half-Life. A lot of crouch jumping required. Oh, shit. I'm not gonna do that whole thing over. So... Oh, it's very finicky. Um, I don't think there's any other way to do this. If there is, uh, I don't know. So, <coughs> that's pretty much how you get in there. Once again, that's not terrible. It's clever use of the level geometry, but it's a little bit... I don't know. It doesn't feel good to me. It's not my favorite. I don't really like it that much. But it's, it's acceptable. It's an interesting puzzle nonetheless. So now... We're going to get introduced to another enemy type here pretty quickly as well. I don't really dislike them. I'm pretty sure it's a reskin grunt from Half-Life 1. Also remember that door there. We're going to have to come back here later. So, Our story! Hmm. And he should just drop dead. I know, right, Mark? This is actually a pretty cool particle effect, if I have to say so. <coughs> so... Yeah, these guys take 20 or so bullets to kill. Um, about three or four shotgun blasts to the face will usually do them in pretty quickly. They're not really hard to kill. They do have a melee attack, obviously, but it's not very insanely damaging. And you can always tell where they're at because they make some very specific noises. Like I said, I think they just have the... Uh... Oh, check this shit out. It's actually kind of cool. I've had him actually come back alive and he just exploded and scared the shit out of me once. So yeah, that's going to cut it for this episode. I'll see you in the next one.